Hey everybody, Mike from Just Watch back with another Just Watch review. Everybody, thank you for taking a few minutes today to stop by and check out our content. If you are a first time visitor to the channel and you like the content, please do hit that subscription button below. Today we are going to take a look at this wonderful Alpina Alpiner 4 Swiss watch that is on loan from my friend Mimo at Mimo's Jewelry. If you like the watch and you want to purchase one and get a great deal, go over to mimosjewelry.com. I'll put the link down below in the show notes. Use the code ALPI25, that's ALPI25 at checkout and you will receive 25% off any in-stock Alpina watch. So Alpina, as we mentioned in the unboxing episode that we released just a few days ago, has a long history within the Swiss and German watchmaking world, actually all over Europe going back to 1883. If you wanna know more about that history, do check out the first five minutes of the unboxing video that we did on this piece the other day. Other than that, let's get this watch under the lights and take a closer look, and we'll be back with a wrap up after. So here it is. All right, so let's take a look at the Alpina Alpiner 4 here under the lights. Let's run you through it. First off, the construction of the case I think is phenomenal. I mentioned in the unboxing video that I find it very similar to what you get from Tudor in their Black Bay series as far as the fit, finish, construction, bezel action, everything else. Really nice job by Alpina. The case is a 316L stainless steel construction throughout 44 millimeters from the nine to the three, excluding the crown, 52 millimeters from tip to tip, and 13 millimeters thick. So really nice as far as the thickness goes there. A Little bit on the long side at 52, 22 millimeter lug width. So plenty of straps available to set up on this watch. One of the things I really like about the case is the finish. Alpina chooses not to do the case sides in a high polish. They instead give us a brushed finish on the case sides, which I think might look a little bit better long term. They also give us really cool bevels that run tip to tip that are very much vintage inspired. It's a super wide bevel, very similar to what Rolex used back in the day on their early sports watch models. The lugs, the flanks of the lugs actually turn down a little bit too, very similar to what Omega does. So real nice job on the case throughout, give you a look at the case back. I really like this mountain logo, especially the relief that they did on the sky. Sorry about the sticker on the back. Also, as I mentioned, this watch is on loan from Mimos Jewelry and I did not want to remove it as a future owner might want to make that choice for themselves. So I did not do that. The crown on this watch is screw down crown, 100 meter water resistance. It features the Alpina triangle logo there. You can see there really nicely embossed with a really nice grippy coin edge on the sides. The watch does feature hand wind and hack. So when you come out here to your first position, you can set the date back in, you can do the hand winding and then all the way up two stops and you can set the time. When you're setting the time on this watch, it is a very solid, precise feeling as you're coming around. So no feeling of slop or play. And you can see that the second hand has stopped there. So we do have the hack feature in play as well, which we all love. Popping it back down, just a really nice solid click. And then catching those threads, just very precise and very smooth all the way around. The movement here, let's talk about the heart of this beast. It is Alpina's caliber AL525. It is a 26 joule automatic movement, vibrates along at 28,800 vibrations per hour, features a 38 hour power reserve. And of course, as you can see, it is center hours, minutes and seconds with the date complication at three o'clock. Let's talk about the dial now. So we have a wonderful, what Alpina calls Glacier Blue Sunray dial and this watch in the sunlight is fantastic. I have to tell you, I really like it. You can even see just how nice that is underneath these studio lights. Really like the color with just a little bit of a hint of red in the four logo and on the counterbalance of the second hand. Features applied index markers the same all the way around, excepting for the 12 o'clock where they double it up. It has a minute track that is angled down, similar to what Seiko does actually. I really like the minute track here and a 
Dauphine style handset that is very long, reaches all the way out to the minute track. Just a really nice look all around and very easy to read. Does feature, I believe, what is a Super Luminova blend. I'll give you guys a look here at the luminous material. I'm just gonna turn off the lights. So it's a real strong luminous material. As I said, I suspect that it is a Super Luminova blend and it is just going to be very strong and long lasting. So good stuff there. You can see all of the index markers, including at the date, which I appreciate, have luminous material as well as the bezel pip. There is no luminous material on the bezel itself, of course, as it is stainless steel. Also want to give you guys a wrist shot of this timepiece. And one of the things that I found interesting about the unboxing episode that I did on this watch just a few episodes ago was the amount of comments it received, the video received about the size of it at 44 millimeters. And it does wear really nicely. It is, you know, as we mentioned, it's long, 52 from lug to lug. So it's longer than the Seiko's are, but still very wearable. Let me show you. So also wrist check here, I am wearing the Steinhardt Explorer 39, still really enjoying wearing this watch. Let's just pop this off. Actually, I will also pop the gloves off to make it easier. And I know more than a few people commented that they would prefer to see the wrist shot without gloves. Really nice quality leather strap here as well. So there is the watch on the wrist. Really nice to wear. As I said, I have a about 170 millimeter wrist and these lugs at 52 are still not hanging off the edges of my wrist, so no problem there. I think you could get away with this watch down to about a six and three quarters, even with it being 44 millimeters. I think it still looks great on the wrist and I definitely appreciate that 13 millimeter height on the watch. So I really like the watch on the wrist. Let's talk about the crystal now. We have a slightly domed sapphire crystal with anti-reflective coating on the inside. So if I can turn that for you to see. So there you can see that real slight dome. I really like the crystal on this watch. It's one of my favorite things. It's very minimal, very minimal distortion and just super clean. And I really like that it has that AR coating. Of course, you can see even here under the studio lights, it's just reflecting back a little bit of the studio light, but it's not real sharp or angular in that reflection. So you can see that it's doing a really good job on that AR coating. The bezel is bi-directional, 60 click, and just a really nice light feeling to it. It does not have any stiction at all. I think it's a really nice bezel actually. Like I said, it's very reminiscent to me of the Tudor Black Bay series. Strap is genuine leather, contrast stitching with the Alpina mark on the inside and of course a really nicely machined pin buckle also signed with the Alpina right there. As I said overall finish and fit on this watch is very high. I put it right up there with you know just about any watch I've reviewed over the last year. Like I said it reminds me a lot of the Tudor Black Bay series which is just a really high quality watch. So that is it for the up close look at the Alpina. Let's take it back to the studio and wrap it up. So that's it for this review on the Alpina Alpiner 4. I really like the watch. As I mentioned with the size, I think it would be stronger at a 39 or 40 millimeter size. What I think is interesting about that though is nobody really or very few people ever mentioned that the Seiko Turtle is too big at a 45 millimeter, but I had a lot of uh, comments underneath my unboxing video of this saying it's too big at 44. So I just kind of found that interesting. Also, same with the Seiko Shogun. I did a video about, I don't know, maybe a dozen episodes ago asking if the Seiko Shogun at 45 millimeters is too big. And I had a lot of comments underneath going, no, it's not too big. It's perfect. You, you know, your wrists are too small or it's great for people with bigger wrists. And a lot of comments along that lines, which I definitely appreciate. And I, I do think that the Shogun at 45 is a really solid watch for a lot of people, especially anybody that has bigger than like a seven and a half inch wrist. And I think same deal here. I think if you're somebody that has a bigger wrist, you know, if you're seven and a quarter inches or bigger and you like the look of an oversized watch, I think this is a really strong consideration for you, especially if you want a quality Swiss watch with long history in the European watchmaking world. I think Alpina is a really good brand to look into. If you want a smaller watch, maybe not the piece for you, but still, 
I did away with it at seven inch wrist, actually underneath seven inch wrist without a problem. I found it very comfortable to wear. I think if you're down around six and a half, it might be a bit on the oversized size for you. Even still, if that's a look that you like, it'll probably be fine for you. Otherwise, quality watch, great discount with MimosJewelry.com. Definitely check them out. And I think it's just a real strong buy. So two thumbs up on the Alpina Alpiner 4. Everybody, that is it for this episode. Thank you again for stopping by and checking out the content. We'll be back soon with another episode. For now, if you would hit the subscription button over here if you haven't already, definitely appreciate having you guys back for more content in the future. Everybody, hit it right here. All right, thanks.